different presentation, much more inspirational and image-based, but the content will excite you in terms of thinking about the future. According to Morgane, the future of food is as much a part of our sustenance as part of our aspirations. To help us on our journey, please welcome Dr. Morgane Gain. We are needing protection. We are looking now to protect ourselves from lots of things, but we're also trying to protect the environment from us. It's a bit of a crazy world we're in. And we're also redefining this sort of this idea of, of uh, protection is in some ways is redefining luxury, protecting the world from consuming. You know, we've gone really into stuffication. We've got too much stuff. And as we go forward and we almost look at smoking as a little bit of a shameful little sneaky thing that we sometimes do, maybe shooting up, it depends on what level you're at. But, <laughs> but, um, but definitely one, you know, one of the things that we're going to start thinking is that, oh my goodness, you've got a lot of stuff. Aren't you embarrassed? Consuming is going to become embarrassed. Embarrassing. And we know that as the generations go forward, definitely as, as the kids are the sort of the 13, 14 year olds, the Gen Z are really wanting experience. They're a very, very different generation to the millennials. We'll start to see filtration systems coming into homes, into the way that we can even build and structure our homes. You know, what we build into the walls, breathable plasters, breathable paints, and even things like the way that we clean our homes, that we have become so sterile and we're in such a sterile time, which is why people might worry, how am I going to get that burger that someone's wrapped, but maybe they've touched it. We're so concerned about that, that now we're getting superbugs. Everybody's got so much more... Um, uh, antibiotics in their system, whether it's from the food or from what they're taking, that we're actually losing our resistance and we're losing our protection. So in this type of survival, in this type of protection, things are shifting up. So, so that we're even thinking about how we colour food. It's not that long ago when there was a lot of food colourings and, you know, even sort of think about, thinking about strawberry ski yoghurt in the 19... 80s, which was like fluorescent pink. You know, now we, as consumers, they don't like that. But one of where we're going more and more is to have something that's really washed out. So washed out colours in our food will become a lot bigger. I mean, this is this is just a mask, a breathing mask, obviously just made from an old IKEA bag. But but there's lots of things that we're seeing in fabrics, in fabrics that prevent any kind of toxicity coming from the environment. In fact, just recently, about two weeks ago, I stayed in the only hotel available in New York, which has, um, it's a completely sterile room. So the room itself has filtered water. All of the water, even from the showers, has no chlorine in it. Uh, all of the bedding, everything's hypoallergenic. There's a special filtration system in the room, so if you have any problems with pollen, you don't experience that in the room. And that's where we're going. It's almost needing that kind of protection as we get more, you know, people are getting more and more hay fever, people are getting sicker and sicker with different things. So again, with this, the clothing and everything as we go forward, this protection from the environment, this sort of functionality of clothing. And you, this might seem a little far out, but again, in this type of protection, we're going to see this massive, and we're already seeing a, a very big so a political uprising, an uprising of people who may have never protested before, people who have maybe never voiced their opinion before, and also this discontent in lots of pockets of the world and even in our own country. So that we're going to send out the, the stray dogs with cameras on and they're going to be the, the agents of protection. They're going to be feeding back all of that information from the camera on their front back to a central hub so that the world can be somewhat uh, organised or um, held, held to account a little bit more because it's going to be much more difficult to try and police the global situation for the next 18 months. And I'm going to talk about that. And this idea of, uh, you know, this idea of protection where we start to see everything needing to be transparent, even our, our luggage cases, you know, we're already seeing it at the airports where you take out your toiletries and put them in a bag. Now in the US, if you've travelled to the US and you've had food in your suitcase or in your hand luggage, they also make you take the food out now. And the other thing that we're going to see in protection is that protecting each other, we're going to realise that that's where, the, that's where the, the, the things that matter are. We're going to see a rise of kindness because kindness will be the antidote in our protection. We are not going to be able to trust governments and all the legislation around us. We are not really going to be able to trust anything in social media, and I'll show you some examples of that. But what we are going to trust is our small little group. And we're going to know that group, and we're going to be valued in that group because of our kindness. Not because of what we have, because remember, that's an old thinking. It's definitely about just being kind. And we'll see that as a, as in a corporate structure. We'll see that as a, as a communication out from brands. It's going to be about sharing and kindness. 
What's interesting about disruption, because we're living right in it right now, is that it's changing everything that we ever knew, ever. And it's unprecedented, not just in our lifetime, in our great, 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 great grandparents' lifetime. Because what's shifting is something, which it's, what's shifting is our, our, our reason for being. And our current reason for being is having. And so that we've wanted to have, we are born and then we have an education and then we get a job and then we get a car, then we get a better car, then we get a house, then we get married, then we get children, then we get, we're just getting and accumulating and having. And that really has been the foundational structure of our society. As we get to 2020, it's incredible because 2020, like the 2020 vision, I don't know if it's a coincidence, it's just, for me, it's a really interesting synergy that 2020 is obviously not on the 1st of January 2020, but as we go forward, it's going to be about knowing and it's going to shift everything we've ever known so that what we think right now, in the next 18 months, it's going to be so unrecognisable that you won't believe it's just 18 months ago. Every single thing, every company that you thought was here for life will disappear. You know, not all of them, I'm not saying all of them, but you know, even Woolworths went that way. think, wow, that's been on the high street forever. Those sorts of things, and we're going to see this almost daily. You know, I think Chocky Wocky Doodah just went down last week and different little brands, if you've heard of them. We, you know, things are falling quickly. <coughs> Relationships are breaking up. And, part, and, not, and this also, whenever we look at these trends, it's not just from a company perspective, it's from a personal perspective. What you thought you loved, what you thought was your reason for being, is shifting. Whether you know it or not, it will change. If you don't change and you hold on to the way things were, it will be really, really difficult because things are not going to be as they've ever been and using that kind of trajectory is going to be so different. Uh, in the middle, this is a baby shower cake. Oh, it's a boy. And this different ways in which we can sort of cover our face and adorn our face. And this idea of hiding and revealing and being revealed. You know, this is, uh, this is Mrs. Stamp, which is a stamp shop in Hong Kong. But if you know the secret password, you can get into the speakeasy behind. And I think we're going to see lots of that kind of truth and what's behind the truth. And these are the kind of interfaces that we're seeing on the skin, so that our watch, our data will be on our skin, that we'll, uh, we'll see a lot more haptic stuff. So, for example, uh, loads of holograms, so that you'll be having... Christmas dinner, but oh, wouldn't it be great if Auntie so-and-so from Australia was there? And what you'll do, you'll dial her up, she'll turn up at a hologram, you'll be wearing the haptic sweater and she'll give you a hug or she'll tap you on the back and you'll feel it. And so the skin will be that digital interface so that your watch will be there, everything, all of our information we need will be there so that we're really paying for that sort of disruptive future which we're now looking at, out of the planet for. So that's the future. I don't want you to think it's shit. It's pretty good. <laughs> Please be excited because it's, it, I think it's super exciting and we're living in an unprecedented time. My only advice would be to seize it, change, shake things up, be part of that momentum because it's happening with you if you want to go there and it's happening without you if you don't.